Hello and how's it going everybody? It is Skullzy here with the latest gaming news, rumors, and speculation. It seems like we're back in the dark ages of Starfield information, forever floating amongst the void of space itself, waiting for an official update from Bethesda, only to receive radio silence. Ever since this game's delay, Bethesda has been bunkered up back in their Maryland vault to work ever harder on Starfield. And while that is a good thing, the drawback is they stepped back from marketing the game entirely, leaving us wondering when we'll actually hear more about Starfield. That day is today, K kind of, as we just got a small update from an ex-Bethesda Game Studios developer that helps clarify some of the discussion and speculation going down right now about the various settlements and locations within Starfield. And in addition to this, I also want to break down an additional discovery of sorts regarding how many planets there will be in this game as well. By now, most of us know there will be over 1,000 planets, but there might actually be a lot more than that. So let's not waste any more time and get straight into today's content. Let's start with the official statement of sorts. The statement itself comes from ex-Bethesda Game Studios developer Nate Perkypile. Nate has been at Bethesda for over 14 years and has worked on several titles ranging from Fallout 3 to Fallout 4 to Skyrim and of course Starfield. Nate left Bethesda to focus on his own solo game dev studio back in April of 2021 and since then he has given some insight and random bits of information about previous Bethesda games such as explaining the bee glitch in Skyrim or several other developer decisions regarding these previous games, but to my surprise, he recently gave us something small but very interesting involving Starfield as well. One would think that an ex-Bethesda developer wouldn't really have much to say about an ongoing project, or at least couldn't say much legally, but Nate likely knows very well what he can actually say and not say in regards to Starfield, and this is actually something most of us assumed anyway. However, despite these common assumptions, there's a lot of drama and discussion within the community about this very topic as well, so Nate actually helped clarify some of these worries here. A bit of a foundation here, though, before we get to his statement real quick. For quite a while now, it's been known that Starfield will have four major cities. We know of three of them at this time, Neon, Aquila, and New Atlantis, leaving one fourth mysterious location that the community has been speculating over. They believe this fourth city could be everything from a settlement on Mars to an actual alien capital city somewhere. Further still, knowing there will be four settlements within Starfield sparked a sort of angry mob response, claiming four cities within a huge game like Starfield Starfield sounds lazy, leaving many to assume that most of this game will just be simply procedurally generated and full of empty, barren planets. Well, this is a topic best left for a video all on its own, Nate Perky Pyle's recent statement actually helps debunk this. On September 9th, PC Games interviewed Nate and asked him things such as questions. Within this interview, Nate clarified he did indeed work on Starfield for a number of years, so even though Nate isn't at Bethesda right now, he definitely knows what he is talking about here, and in fact, Nate actually worked on one of these four major cities. He further states that the Four Settlement Statement has been taken out of context quite a lot, and clarifies that Starfield will definitely have more than just four settlements. There will indeed be four major huge city locations, but like previous Bethesda Game Studios games, there will be several other smaller locations as well, such as settlements, outposts, bases, and more. Like I said, while many already assumed this would be the case, many seem to lack common sense when it comes to any and all opportunities to be negative about something within the gaming industry. Combine this fact with a forever ongoing console war, and one could easily see how the four cities within Starfield's statement could get twisted into something negative. So despite the obviousness of this statement in itself, it's nice to get some solid clarification from somebody credible about this entire thing, hopefully putting at least this particular piece of drama to rest. The next thing I want to talk about in today's video is something less obvious and something that Todd wasn't quite clear about, and yet another focal point of debate within the community right now. The over 1,000 planet statement. In June of 2022 this year, it was announced that Starfield would have over 1,000 planets in game, with each and every planet being a full location we can land on and explore. While this seems mind-blowing at first, many were quick to compare this game to No Man's Sky for obvious reasons. While no doubt a large amount of procedural generation will be used within Starfield, we have to remember this is a Bethesda Game Studios game. One of the main things that sets them apart is their capability of handcrafting amazing worlds and locations, so there will definitely be a lot of handcrafted content layered into this procedural generation, and in previous Bethesda games they actually use a lot of procedural generation anyway, but they're masters of blending it in to the game's world so we as the player don't really notice. I believe this is going to be the case with Starfield 100%. And another thing we got to keep in mind here 
here is with Starfield being a space game, there will be likely several planets with very little to nothing on them but just various metals and other resources we can harvest. However, there will most likely be a lot more than just a thousand planets. Ever since June, the community pondered this statement. Do 1,000 planets also include moons, or are the moons considered a separate classification? We all know the answer scientifically that, in our real world, a moon is definitely not considered a planet at all. However, like the negativity of old, several were quick to wonder if Todd was just telling a sweet little lie here, mixing the moons and planets all within the same 1,000 quantity number. Like I said, people like to find any reason to be negative or to potentially say a project is going to suck, but again, this actually may not be the case. As Reddit user LexB777 points out, within a June Starfield showcase this year, we can notice during the planet explanation portion that a HUD pops up, giving us additional context about the various planetary bodies and solar systems we'll discover. Here we can see the Alpha Centauri system. In this graphic, we can clearly see four planets with their perspective moons showing above. And in this data sheet down below, we can actually see the planets and moons are listed separately, with there being the four visible planets we can see, as well as the eight moons. If we use this as a litmus test ran against Todd's over 1,000 planet statement, then we can deduce that there will easily be well over 3,000 different planetary body locations to discover and explore within Starfield, ranging from the planets themselves to the very moons that orbit them. Well, again, this seems like something that should be easy to figure out and should be common sense. The discourse amongst the community surrounding this particular topic was quite dramatic, so like the previous Nate Perkypile statement, the separation of moon and planets within the game's literal visual data helps helps bring clarification to all of this and actually massively adds to the hype. Over 1,000 planets sounded amazing by itself, but when you consider that most planets would have at least one moon and several planets multiple moons, I estimate there to be easily well over 3,000 different places where we can land on and explore, and that's not even counting in space stations and stuff. While I love No Man's Sky, Starfield will no doubt 100% have a lot more handcrafted content, which really helps paint the picture just how epic and amazing this RPG really is. That's everything I wanted to talk about in today's video though. As always, let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments below. Thumbs up if you enjoy the content. Be sure to subscribe to help grow the community and the channel. And huge shout out to the following amazing people for going above and beyond to support our little community here and the channel as well. Get your name added to this permanent future video shout out list by supporting the channel over on Coffee, Patreon, or here on YouTube as an exclusive channel member. Links for all this and more are down in the description below as well as a link for Skullsy merchandise and the Skullsy Discord server, which you should totally join by the way. And as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in next time when hopefully Bethesda stops being radio silent. It, it just works.